Now, we love Nvidia, but they've got a bit of a naming problem. This is the third graphics card from them named the Titan X. Sure, it's the fastest video card currently for gaming, but we're still a little bit confused, so let's figure it out. Working across multiple computers is a messy process. It's way too easy to click and type on the wrong system, which can cause unnecessary stress and frustration. But we found a solution. Synergy. Synergy is a software application that lets you control multiple devices with just one mouse and keyboard. You can drag and drop files, share your clipboard, and more across Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Find out more and get 50% off using the link in the description. In 2013, NVIDIA released the world's fastest consumer graphics card. It was called the GeForce GTX Titan. It dominated everything else in games and even had double precision floating point operations rivaling Quattro cards. Then, in 2014, they released the Titan Z, or Titan Z, which was effectively two Titan chips crammed into one card. Again, the fastest single card on the market. Jump forward another year, and in 2015, the GeForce GTX Titan X was released. Again, the single fastest card on the market. Jump forward yet another year, and in 2016, they released the NVIDIA Titan X. Nope, that was not a mistake. They are actually both called the Titan X. Interestingly enough, they dropped the GeForce GTX part of the title in order to try to differentiate the card more from their regular consumer gaming lineup. It was still confusing though, so people on the internet started calling it the Titan XP, since it was based on the Pascal architecture. Well, guess what? It's 2017 and Nvidia still loves making things difficult. So here is the new, new Nvidia Titan XP. And just like every other card with the name Titan in it, this is currently the fastest single video card you can get for gaming. And just like before, the Titan XP has better double floating point operation performance compared to the average gaming card, but nothing as good as the one third FP64 found on the original Titans. From the outside, you'll be hard pressed to find any differences, really. The card uses the same exact blower style cooler as the current Pascal cards, down to the same Titan X logo on the side. The biggest difference comes down to the outputs. Now, the original new Titan X, or better known as the original Pascal Titan X, has a DVI port, while the 1080 Ti and the new Titan XP both do not. That shrinks the card down to a single slot in case you want to put a water block on it. Looking at MSI Afterburner, we're hitting an average boost clock of 1,797 MHz with peaks up to 1,873 MHz. Our temperature stays at a peak of 70 degrees before our clock speed tops out, so there's definitely room for even higher clock speeds if you water cool this card. But enough of that. What about in games? First, here are the specifications of the Titan X, the GTX 1080 Ti, and the new Titan XP. Whether we're looking at synthetic benchmarks or in-game performance, the new Titan XP is 5-16% to faster than the 1080 Ti across the board. We tested Battlefield 1, GTA 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Witcher 3, Unigen Valley, and 3D Marks Firestrike, and Time Spy. I mean, let's face it, this is a $1,200 video card. $1,200. We knew it was going to be fast, but is it worth it? Well, that all depends on who you are as a person. If you enjoy kicking puppies or knocking ice cream out of the hands of toddlers, then no, this is not the card for you. But then again, nothing is for you because you're horrible. But in all seriousness, it depends on what you intend to do with it. For us mere mortals, then no, you do not need the Titan X. If you're looking for something for gaming, then you're better off buying a GTX 1080 Ti for $700 instead. If you were dead set on spending $1,200 for the Titan XP, then you should just save up an extra $200 and get a second 1080 Ti for SLI instead. If you're an industry professional and you want to do some 3D modeling or some real-time deep learning algorithms, then the Titan XP might be more 
more suitable for you. Many applications do not support multiple graphics cards, so you want to use the single fastest card that you can. While it's nowhere near as fast as an equivalent Tesla card for pure computing power, the Titan XP still lets you game. And that brings us to our conclusion. The original Titan was a very special card that bridged the gap between consumer gaming graphics cards and workstation graphics cards. It had very good computing power and the best gaming performance all in one card. But now that gap is a bit more blurred. The latest Titan XP offers an improvement of just 5 to 15% above a 1080 Ti, but with a price tag that's bigger by 70%. And Tesla compute accelerators are in a whole different league with a multitude of features that aren't found in GeForce GTX class cards. One thing that we should point out is availability. The only way to get your hands on a Titan XP is to either buy one directly from Nvidia or buy it with a pre-configured PC from a system integrator such as NCX PC. Retailers aren't allowed to sell the card on its own. And board partners such as Asus, MSI, or Gigabyte aren't allowed to create custom versions of the card either. So leave a comment below on what you think about the Titan XP or if you would get one or even consider getting one. That's it for this video, so thanks for watching. We hope you're less confused. You can click here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIS. Which Titan is this? I don't know. You wouldn't be able to tell. But we told you, so yeah.